Hello guys, this is Mike from theprogramming.org and now that you have a little bit of an overview of what a socket is supposed to do, let's start coding it in Java. Um, I decided I want to write the client uh, class first before the server. Uh, they're pretty much very similar, almost the same amount of lines. Uh, the server has one extra line and so about one or two extra steps that I think will make more sense when we code that after we have coded the client side first so you can get the hang of that and down here in my project folder I made two separate uh, projects and the reason I did that is uh, there's, I guess you could put uh, both of them in the same project folder but I like to separate it out a little bit and when I make my jars it's a little bit easier when they're in if I was making a uh, uh, some type of GUI and I wanted to make it a desktop application it would be a little bit easier just to have everything in it in the the right project and separated that way so it's really up to you but this is how I did it so I'm gonna create a client class right here say new class in the client socket uh, project and I'm just gonna call it client and I'm gonna put a main method in there I wasn't at first, but I'm going to now. I was just going to have a client that a uh, class that described everything I'm going to code, and then the client driver class that just instantiated it and did the run method on it. But I'm just going to do it all in the same one to be simple. And I wanted to make three variables real quick, and they're going to be private socket, and I'm going to call that client socket. And then I need an input stream and an output stream. So I'm going to have a private buffered reader. Buffered reader. And this is going to be my input stream. And up here we can also write for our uh, output stream, I'm going to use something called a print stream. So it's going to be print stream. And I'm just going to call it output. To, and that will be our variable name to kind of keep track of. Of, of what we're supposed to do with these objects. So these uh, make sure the variable names make sense to what these objects are supposed to be doing. It'll make decoding this or uh, uh, debugging this and going through this code later on in life a lot more easy. Plus comments. So don't forget those. Uh, control Shift O to auto import those uh, the imports up there. And now below the main method, I'm going to write the code. I'm just going to make it one method for now. I'm just going to call it run public void run and inside of here uh, I don't know if I should just start off writing try. Now I'm just going to write it and then you'll see how try catch block uh, will need to be put in there. So first I'm going to instantiate that client socket. So client socket equals new socket and in here there's going to be two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the IP address to the computer you're trying to connect to. And in this case it's going to be our own computer so we can write local host. And if you don't want to write local host and you want to write that I you can write your own IP address or you can write a specialized IP address and it's 127.0.0.1 and that represents your own computer. And the second parameter uh, is going to be your port number that you're connecting to. And as you saw in the previous tutorial, some port numbers are specified for certain actions. So just to be safe, we're just going to give it something that isn't a, a normal port number. And we know that we can run things on it. So there we go. Now we have to handle this IO exception. So we can do a, let's do a try catch and that's fine all right um let's clean this up i'm just going to be really lazy and make this ex exception so it'll handle any type of error or exception that's thrown and we'll just say e dot print stack trace okay and now let's go down here i believe i o Okay, so IO actually handles that other exception that was thrown called the unknown host exception. So we can get rid of that up there. And 
let's see what's the next thing we got to do let's create an output stream to and that will write to this uh, server socket that we're going to create so output equals new print stream so we're now instantiating that print stream that we named up there and make sure you label all your variables correctly and in this parameter what we're going to do is we're going to have an output stream for this client socket so the way you do that is you write the variable name client socket because that's what points to the socket and you want to get the output stream for it so you just say get, uh, get output stream is the first thing available for us so there we go and I guess as soon as it does connect uh, we want let's just print something to the server and we're going to say output dot print line because it's a print stream it has a lot of the same functions as you know system dot out or any type of print uh, printing object would so you have print line and print and uh, print f so we're going to do print I keep misspelling this there we go so we're going to print line and we're just going to say hello server there we go alright and now that we have that we can we need to be able to read in any input that the server might send back in case we were trying to access a database and, or querying a database through a socket or uh, maybe just instant messaging somebody we need to have some type of way of reading what they send back to us and we did that by uh, by starting off with this buffered reader input but now we're going to instantiate it down here so input equals new buffered reader and pay attention this is going to get a little bit complicating but not too much we're going to need to instantiate an input stream reader inside of this parameter for buffered reader so new input stream reader and inside of that parameter we're going to pass in our uh, reference to the socket which is client socket and it's get input stream this time so there we go we probably have to yep yeah, we got to import this and now what we can do is if something is sent let's just call it string uh, let's think of a word for it let's say string message equals input dot read line and we want to print that out to our screen to our console system dot out dot print line let's say message okay so I believe I have everything running correctly on here uh, the output stream has been created uh, the client socket uh, has asked permission to connect to the local host at this port number and that will make a little bit more sense when we code up the server in the next tutorial so make sure to watch that and you'll see how the server sits there and listens for this client to try to connect to it and what happens when it does connect and before I forget let me uh, write this main method very simple it's just client and we can just call it whatever we want I'll say lowercase c client equals new client takes nothing in the parameter and we'll just say client.run because that's the method that we're trying to run so client.run alright so that's the basic setup for a client uh, socket and these aren't the only uh, input and output stream types that you can have you can also use object input stream and object output stream but for this case I'm just going with the, the more customary one that you might see uh, if you ever look at other people's code. So that is the basic setup for client and join me in the next tutorial and we will get these connecting once I write the server class. Thank you guys.